Hi, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Studio. So today's video is about project briefing. Project briefing is something that is required for any project and that too in any kind of industry, be it construction, IT. So any kind of industry requires a project briefing to be done by the project lead or the team lead. And this has to be done so that a proper execution of the project takes place. So before a project briefing is done by the team lead, that particular individual has to know the complete details about the project. So then only he can be in a position to give that proper briefing to his team members. So unfortunately, most of the time what happens is this project briefing does not take place and directly the project work allocation begins and the execution starts so this actually makes a lot of confusion chaos there would be a lot of duplication of work team members are not really aligned like they are not very clear of what is to be done when is to be done how is to be done so this project briefing will be a document wherein all these will be rectified and all the team members are you know equally responsible for the project in a proper way so the main purpose of a team briefing is to ensure that all team members are aware of the project the nature of the project and they fully understand all deliverables any ambiguities needs to be clarified and clear delegation of duties should be confirmed during the briefing so this is the main purpose of a project briefing now these are some of the few items that needs to be covered during that project briefing there is a project name and number project details the key dates scope of work method of measurements in this video i will be mainly concentrating on the project briefing that needs to be done when a pre-contract measurement works is being done so based on the type of work these items should also be changing so this is mainly concentrating on a quantity take of work or measurement works for example you are a consultant and you have to do a quantity take of measurement for a cost plan work it might be a concept design stage or detailed design stage or a schematic design or it might be the final stage where you are preparing the bill of quantities so based on that these are the items that needs to be covered during the project briefing sometimes it might be a consultant sometimes it might also be a third party the consultant might give it to a third party the work might be outsourced to a third party so you would be a third party company and the consultant would be giving you the duty of doing the takeoff so as a third party consultant also this project briefing needs to be done so as i was mentioning these are the items to be covered project name number the details project details key dates scope of work method of measurement the format structure for the cost plan or bill of quantity the aim and the priorities work allocation correspondence details and any other issues so let's look in detail about each of these items obviously project name and number needs to be brief so this is actually required for any type of correspondence sometimes you know for requiring the details or mailing the details this project name there might be a separate code for each project so that code needs to be used for correspondence so that there not might be any confusion so this also again is required for your time sheets your attendance marking so on which project you have worked on that particular week so that code you can use for your attendance marking and again for different correspondences you can use your project name and number and you're clear that you currently you are undergoing this project code work so for that purpose project name and number is required next is the project details so this is like what the project is about the type of project whether it is a residential commercial oil and gas data center what type of project it is the area of the project that you can get from the reports there might be a lot of reports available when the documents are shared by the client or the consultant you can look into that or you can ask the consultant or the client about this area then the floors how many floors if it's a high-rise building what is the floor number of floors the location which country that 
particular project is located at the client name for whom this project is being you know, developed then the consultant details the architect details so these are the some of the project details required and needs to be briefed to the team next comes the key date key dates would be one would be when the documents was received by the client or the consultant like the, all the drawings the reports the specifications so when that we received which date it was received then what is the submission the deliverable submission date so sometimes the project might be a one week delivery time so based on that the allocations or all the resources should be allocated then sometimes again there might be a phase or part dates like well, there might be two three buildings in that particular project so one project one building should be submitted in this date and this project should be submitted in this date again this there will be phases there might be phase one would be some part of the project phase two will be some part of the project so that is for phase one there might be some priority so that should be submitted in this date or phase two should be submitted in this particular date then the progress catch-up date sometimes the client consultant might say that we would require a catch-up to be done every day in this time or every week in this time so these details should be provided to the team members so that they are clear about the different dates they can manage their works according to that date next comes the scope of work so scope of work is what is your task that you need to do for this particular project sometimes it might be the complete take of uh, works sometimes it might be just the elements you know that there are different elements in a construction project which are civil structural architectural MEP so sometimes it might be just the MEP works that needs to be taken off sometimes it might be just a civil or civil or architect so based on that again based on phases and plot there might be two phases so phase one might be done by someone else phase two would be your scope of work floors also some floors might be your part some floors might be someone else part and so it's like partial or complete that is what you need to get that idea from the consultant and client as a team lead and you need to provide that details to your team members next is a method of measurement used to make the cost plan or the boq there are different types of method of measurements this sm4 for infrastructure works smm7 for me the railway method of measurement so based on the type of project and where the project is located at the method of measurements might change so that should be made clear so that once you start some method of measurement later on it should not the client or consultant should not tell that this was not the method of measurement that needs to be uh, implemented it was something else so that needs to be made clear initially itself and that should be made clear to the team members itself so that the team members are also aware and they do not mix up the method of measurement in while making their cost plan for their particular element or particular building next comes the format or structure of the boq or cost plan this again sometimes you as a consultant or second or third party you might have your own formats so you will be using that format or template sometimes a client or a consultant they might provide you with the template or format so that should be made use of so that needs to be cleared initially itself so that again each individual should not be working on different formats and templates and finally it will be a total confusion so there might be usually what happens is that format or template is finalized and that is put on a shared link and everyone works on that particular shared link so that you know, there is no duplication happening there might be different tabs for different buildings or different faces so one person would be working on one tab one person would be working on same tab itself there might be civil structural MEP works so in the same tab itself one person might be working on the MEP part and one person might be working on civil part so the format should be freezed initially itself with the client consultant and that should also be freezed with the team members next comes the aim and the priorities why this exercise is being done then the buildings or phases which is of priority so again why means like it might be done during the concept design stage so just for getting the budget sometimes it might be a final BOQ done so it should be for 
tendering purpose that you would be making this final measurement take off sometimes again it might be a completed project and you would be doing a comparison with the contractor for the final billing purpose you would be doing this task based on the stage at which the project is there might be different purpose for carrying out this task measurement task so that should be made clear of and also the building and phases which is our priority so that sometimes it might be one phase which is more of priority so that needs to be concentrated first so you can manage that works first and properly individuals can be allocated to that particular work so based on that priorities and aims can be set up next comes the most important part which is the work allocation who is doing what and when it needs to be completed then the different checklists that needs to be followed during this task and the reviews who will be doing the reviews of each individual work the auditing work the work allocation template i've already made a video you can look through that video like you can use that template easily that can be used to track the progress of each individual who is carrying out this project so this can be clearly used to see how the progress is going on on based on that the team lead can do whatever is required to you know complete the work on time some work is going slow can assign someone else to support that individual whose work is going slow then the checklist that is very important which is never happens in any project some checklist needs to be once a once an individual work is done he needs to go through this checklist and do that complete that so that he'll get an idea of if he has missed out something i made a detailed video on the mep checklist and again you can go through it if you require it to let me know through the comment section or any of my social media channels you can just message me and the reviews or the audits that happens for each individual works should not be that once the work is complete that then review is not happening next comes as correspondence details so these are like there might be a lot of requests for information once you start your work and to whom that needs to be sent it will be the two and cc who are the individuals whom the project details or the information required needs to be sent it can be external the internal communication external means sending it to the client if you are a consultant sending it to the client or the design consultant about the requirement internal means in internally as your between your team members there might be some queries or there might be some information to be shared so that to whom and whom to be kept as cc and again mostly internally it might not be through mails there might be some teams group or zoom group something skype group that might be created so that the internal discussions for that particular project might take place it would be more quickly done rather than just mailing and waiting for the reply so in a chat group this would be quickly solved and quickly informed whatever details is to be informed finally the other issues like while carrying out the works there might be lot of lessons learned and knowledge that needs to be shared then there might be assumptions so if that happens what needs to be done where it need to be updated you might have some lessons learned in your previous project and uh, if you can go through that and implement that for this project if it is like the same kind of issues or same kind of uh, lessons that needs to be implemented that can be done here and if you have learned something new while doing that can be also noted down or where these needs to be noted down an assumption there might be lot of assumptions you might not receive some rfis raised you might not receive those on time so that there might be lot of assumptions done so that where should you should be updating it so that needs to be made clear and again any other issues what needs to be done whom you should contact for that this should should be properly briefed during the project briefing all these once done a minutes of meeting should be prepared with all these details and this to, should be distributed so this is like a record like a proper document that is done rocket documentation is done and it is distributed to all the team members and whoever is concerned can be done, given to the client so that there is you no know, everything is clear and there is no you know miscommunication happening later on someone should not tell that this was not cleared during the project briefing so everything is recorded in a mom and distributed to everyone then only the work begins so thanks a lot for watching this short video hope this was helpful so if you are a team lead sure that this would be really helpful if you are someone who is a part of a measurement team who is doing a cost planning or a boq preparation work you can you implement this so that there is uh, no confusion 
no chaos and a quality and timely deliverable deliverables happen after implementing these project briefing items and uh, hope this will be useful for your career thanks a lot for watching this video take care bye